know you had to do a remix, right? Yo, check it out, man. This is the Humidor Shop Talk Podcast, man. We back at you coming straight from the Roman Castle, baby. I want you to say what's up to the, the panel today. I got my man, Tree in the House. Say what's up to the people, man. What's up, Tree in the my, House? Got my man, Big Ridge Ridge, over in here. What up, what up? And to my right, that man. Lucky oh, lefty. You know, you know what it is. Check it out, my man Katie Dale. He he he's not with us today, man. He out. He took a leave of absence. Check it. He a wall. He a wall. Vacation. That dude a wall. But check it out, man. We like I said, we at the Roman Castle, smoking good, drinking good. Got my man Big Rome in the house. Say what's up to the people, Big Rome. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He all yeah, set, man, but he's still chilling with us, man. So we about to get it in today, man. We going straight to the NFL, talking about free agency, man. Free agency. So I'm gonna kick it to my man, Lucky Lefty, man. What's the most surprising? Uh, I mean, let's just let's get it out there, man. Kirk Cousins, 84 million guaranteed. I mean, Woo! at the end of the day, man don't have no playoff victories. And when you add it up for what he gonna make the next three years and what he made in the last two years, he gonna clock what? Uh, man, about 100 over 120 million dollars. I mean, for to me is. Just a little above average quarterback, man. He ain't no top of the line quarterback. He ain't put him up there with the Brady's and the Rodgers and the Breezes and catch like that. But uh, it's the position he played, man. So he, he was free agent at a good time. He's the top quarterback. He got that bread. There it is. Check it out, man. Tree, holler at the people, man. What's the most surprising that you've seen right now? Uh, my surprise is, is the Bears. The Bears went actively at getting receivers, as getting – getting Mitch Trubisky a chance to uh, get the ball downfield. They got a tight end. They got two receivers. They serious about putting some offensive points on the board. All right. Let's go to this smooth player right to my left, man. Reggie Reg, man. How let the people tell them what you yes. what you have. No doubt. My surprise is the big name stars, Dominic Kasu, Richard Sherman, Honey Badger. Yeah. Man, it's like, yo, the big stars is getting <laughs> cut. The big, the big numbers. Yeah. They get cashed. What have you done with me lately, huh? <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's crazy that some of these big name cats is being let go like that. And they still in their prime, man. They ain't even over some of them. Right. Ain't Thirty, man. Well, only about to twenty six. Yeah, right Tremaine now. Johnson, Cole, cornerback from the Rams. How you let this cat walk? Yeah, it's a it, it's, it's a lot of moves going on, man. But surprising for me, man, was the the, the Jordy Nelson uh, cut. That shocked. It kind of shocked me, man, because they cut him for. Damn near, uh, uh, Mr. Another Unbreakable. Big ass, another big-ass receiver. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Time. They got Jimmy Graham, man, but, dude, have you played a full season? And he didn't reach his whole full potential when he's with uh, Seattle. Right. Man, that's well, Seattle. Me. Seattle didn't use it right, too. And let me just chime in real quick with Green Bay. I think that was probably, and that's going to probably go into the next thing, one of the worst moves because Green Bay need help on offensive line. They about to lose some more defensive play. Their defense already was sorry. To get rid of Jordy Nelson, the so-called free up money to sign another, not really a tight end, but a big ass receiver that plays tight end, and Jimmy Graham just a stupid move. So, uh, so do you think the Jimmy Graham move is so they're gonna use him like Gronk? You can't use him like Gronk because he can't block. He's not big enough. <laughs> not big enough. The motherfucker can't block. He never could. That's why Seattle couldn't use him. They have to run first team. He doesn't block, though. That move was stupid. They would took that money because they just paid Devontae Adams and, they, and Randall Cobb making money. They would took that money and got somebody on the defensive end or another offensive lineman or something. I would understood it. But to get uh, uh, Graham, Graham just that didn't make sense. Man. Feel a need, motherfucker. Don't just put names. Well, since you mentioned worst moves, man, I'm going to go out and say the worst move to me was – the Vikings. To me, and I'm going to tell you why. A lot of people are like, oh man, Kirk Cousins, you know, he, he throw that ball and all that. But you have messed up the chemistry that they had and they were a game away from going to the chip. And you now you're going to bring in Kirk and he has to build this rapport with them players and all that. They had a nice rapport with Case. And he had a dope ass name. Case King. Come on. No doubt. Just to follow up on that point a little bit. Paying them all that money, they got a, that team is predicated on defense. They got a lot of young stars on rookie contracts. 
that's coming up for contracts. If you get Kirk Cousins 84 guaranteed, you guaranteed to lose three or four of your dynamic defensive mm -hmm. players. So it's gonna hurt them. They gotta win right now, basically. Yeah. If Baltimore, they don't win right Baltimore now, they're in trouble. Ravens. If they win right now, they're in trouble. Baltimore Ravens, Joe yeah. Slack on We talked about that on the last podcast, man, when we we, we talked about how they, they paid Flacco. And then they couldn't keep them young players because he, they couldn't pay them. So they, 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 went out, they, they lost a lot. Players. They didn't have that, that, that wheel, that rotation of bringing in young players. Man, I think they bought their window. They just closed it. That's me. Well, so, I, let, let me disagree right quick. I'm, I want to I ask Tree a question. Uh, is it a panic mode when a team feel like they got a championship window open? That they panic and feel like they gotta make that big move right away because they had Bridgewater, Bradford, and Keenum. They got rid of all three of them just to give Kirk Cousins 84 million guaranteed when they were a game away from the Super Bowl and Keenum didn't even play bad in that championship game. I don't I don't I don't think they they, they in panic mode. I think I think they chose to go long term with the quarterback. I think they chose to start building around this guy because Kirk Cousins, you know, the quietest kept, he played for that contract. You know, he 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 had he put up he paid he put up decent numbers this year. Okay. I, I hear what you're saying. Did they win? But what did he do in Washington? Did he take Washington to the playoffs? Did he do anything? Did he take that team? Did he make he everybody the problem in Washington? Did he make People right. around him. He better. wasn't the problem. A lot of kids got a young, a young player. A lot of receivers was out of Washington. I get you, but they tight end was out of Washington. Mm -hmm. They number you one. You can say that, like, oh, this person is out, but let's go back to Tom Brady, Drew Brees, uh, Aaron Rodgers. No matter who you put on the field with them, they make it happen. They make people better. Kirk hasn't made nobody better. How let me on that? True that. You put up good numbers. True numbers that. don't get you a ring, dog. Numbers Making people better and, and having that team, a true leader, takes that team no matter who they have. I'll true. say this, being, without, without Kirk Cousins, they probably only won four or five games. Man. Being a quarterback, putting up numbers, a lot, get you paper. Yeah, you do. Talk about, so it's as, all about as, as a Bears fan, you saw we had we had a guy put up decent numbers in, on two teams, and we gave him big paper. Yeah. And now he's gone. Hey, it's about putting up decent numbers to get the paper. Shouldn't it be about... That's not, what it's That's not about what them W's. NFL don't care that about the position that you pay, man. That position that you pay, but as an owner, a team, don't you want to get some W's, man? W's gonna bring that paper to your whole organization. So who everybody you gonna eat? Who would you get the money from? You gotta get the money to somebody. I wouldn't have gave it away to him. I would have kept Case, and then we would have been rolling. Nah. On the flip side of that, the Vikings thinking like they got the number. They the top three defense, and everything is predicated on defense. So if he could just manage the game not make the big turnover mistake, they'll be okay with the defense they got. You're right on that. But the wheels will fall off because they put all that paper in there and they can't pay nobody else. Not next year. Not this season. Right. This they got one year to make it happen. Yeah. They gotta make it After happen. After that, done. Well, let me let me say this. In the NFL though, here's the difference when you compare to other leagues. It's hard to have dynasties as far as what the Patriots did is something that's unheard of. I mean, well, you heard saw Pittsburgh did it, Dallas did it, but it just doesn't happen a lot. So a team feel like they got a small window to win a championship, they trying to get that ring. You know, New Orleans grabbed one, uh, the Packers only has one with Aaron Rodgers. The Ravens Rogers. grabbed one. The Ravens grabbed one. They feel like they got that window, they that one player away, they gonna do whatever they gotta do to at least get one championship. We here in Chicago, the 85 Bears, we only got one championship out of that team, right? Mm -hmm. As dumb as that team, we got one Super Bowl ring. The championship window in the NFL is small. Look at Seattle. Seattle got one, right? Mm -hmm. Seattle got one. We thought as great as that, we thought they were going to run the tables for some years. Mm -hmm. So it don't take much in football, man. So when you got that window, you got to grab it. Mm -hmm. Dude, you got to really grab it. know that. All right. So we're going we gonna to keep this show moving on, man. And now we're going to touch in what's the hottest thing going on right now. Called March Madness, baby. NCAA. Hey, NCAA got it going on right now. They are on every TV in America right now. So let's check it out, man. Let's get right into it, man. Day one, Ridge, what's your surprise? Oh, um, man, it's been, all the games have been close pretty much to me. Some of the big teams is, have some scares, <laughs> you know? They it's like, because there's a lot of period, right? Right, a lot when, of the, when the lights go on bright, you gotta show up and play. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't talk, we from the shot. 
No so doubt. you know who we got to talk about. Oh, yeah. Loyola, Loyola Ramblers, baby. No doubt. That 11 seed. No, sir. Knock it off Miami. Represent. What's up, man? <laughs> what, what you think about them, man? What, what you think, Lefty, about their, their chances going further now? Uh, I, I, I picked them to win one game. They were a good team. Uh, the problem is with NCAA is you don't get to see a lot of these teams throughout the year. So you really, you picking kind of blindly. You kind of going off their records, not really knowing uh, the level of competition they play and things like that. But looking at Loyola, they're a good team. But let's be totally honest, what I saw today, uh, Miami kind of gave that game away. They made a lot of mistakes. Miami should have won that game. I, I mean, I'm happy for Loy Loyola. I'm glad, I'm glad they won. I did pick them to win. But Miami choked that game away. But you do understand. It's win or go home. So you gotta come. With, you gotta come with your eight game. No, you can't have no mistakes, turnovers, and all that. Because guess Cinderella, what? These the Cinderella teams, they hungry and they coming at you. Mm -hmm. Trey, hey, I love that the L won today. Cause the L won brings history back. They won in '63. The Bears won the championship in '63. They went to the they went to the dance in '85. The Bears won in '85. So I'm thinking, man, we they, they went to the dance. <laughs> <laughs> the Bears got a chance this year, baby. That's what I'm talking about. You got a chance, represent. Okay, now, let, I'm, I'm finna throw this curveball in here, man, and y'all. Um, the media for March Madness, are they wrong for bringing up the scandal and all that? And it, it, are they taking away from the players, the game? Because, man, we was just watching the game uh, backstage, and... They was talking Alabama. about Alabama. Sexton. They throw the they sexting about he took money, man. And now let's take it away from the game. Reg, what you think about it? You know, I mean, you can pick any team, any good player is gonna be attached to that. That's just the, the culture of basketball in this day and age. And the NCA, it's been long overdue. They gotta pay these players, man. If is they the don't pay them, they're going to get paid on the table. Does the media just look at the storylines, man? No, they hurt. That, that's their job. That's their the, job. Man, they they got to create some, some type of intrigue to keep you watching. They're they not creating they, it. It's there. No, no doubt. But at the same time, it's been there forever. Mm -hmm. So why is this such a big topic it's, right now? It's time to take them down. It's time to take them down. No, I can answer that. You don't have that one big name. You don't have that LeBron James, that Carmelo Anthony type player in college right. to take down. Mm -hmm. So right now, NCAA is wide open. You know, some great players coming out. They say it's like six or seven that could be franchise players, but you don't have that individual that's like the face of the, N the NCAA this year where everybody right. wants to see. So this is a good time to start going after. And I know we talked about Rick Pitino before. We talked about it backstage, but I think... He was just a, a, a sacrificial lamb, and they had to take one big name down. So you said, somebody had, like, somebody like, had to take that L for the storyline. You got to have a big name. Kind of relax. You can't take the coach from North Dakota State and charge him and, and, and keep right. leaving. It's irrelevant. Right, 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 right. You know, right, we got right. to take the coach of Olive Hardy. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. We got to get a big name in there so he's newsworthy, man. So right. no, why no. do you think they, they picked him out of all people? Trey, what's up? Who are you talking about? Patino. Why do you think they chose him? Is it because he went on uh, uh, white suits and no, black, no, black, no, black no, shoes? Patino got three. Oh, that's a money though, dog. Patino, 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 thought he was bigger than the game. No, so they, they had to chop him down a little bit. Right? They had to chop him down. All right. All right. I, 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 let me chime on that. I think it's going now because the dollar amounts are getting bigger. They're getting at a ridiculous amount. You talk a hundred thousand dollars for a college player. So back then we know what was going on in the eighties and the nineties. Ten, twenty thousand here, maybe a new car, maybe pay his mortgage or something like that. Right. You talking about handing you got somebody on wiretap talking about giving an NCAA player a hundred thousand dollars cash. That's heavy, man. That like that we getting into big money and then we started talking about taxes. No doubt. Okay, I hear you, I hear you, man. So, the NCAA March Madness going on, man. The, the four-year players versus these one-and-dones. I salute them. Four-year players, that shows the test and the fortitude to stay there and stay committed to the process. So, salute to all the brothers that stay four years. And that just shows the maturity. So, if they fortunate enough to be drafted, so be it. How many four-year players can get drafted? 
Not a lot on these teams. Not, not a lot. Not a lot. Of look at look at look at uh, team like Loyola got four year players every year. No doubt. So ain't said nobody to. So I can't remember the cat's name from Loyola that hit the shot. He's on the biggest stage Ingram. and bang Ingram. Yeah, Ingram. He banged that shot. Is he gonna get that look now? No. no. Is he gonna get invited? <laughs> is he gonna get invited to Moody Bible on and 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 show but, but one thing, he on the map now. He Trust me. Map. Somebody watching. Yeah, he on, the, he on the map in Greece. <laughs> and that ain't bad. I mean, he gonna, he gonna get paid. Hey, he gonna play now, the basketball. Now, man, understand, gonna the understand this, man. When you go overseas and play some ball, man, and actually get with one of them good teams, you make some bread. You and you ain't got to pay taxes over You're here. You're not paying taxes. And get a house and a car and a deal. Yeah. So, and they I mean, cover everything so that money comes straight to your pocket. You ain't got to spend no money. They're paying your housing, everything. You get, you get two women with that, too. Yeah. Definitely get two women with that. But back, to our, back to our point, these players should be getting some sort of stipend because the NCAA is a multi-billion dollar industry every year. So it's a shame that these players don't get right. more piece of that pie. That's true. Because they're the ones that's out there making it go. So I think the NCAA need to re-evaluate their position on how they take care of these student athletes. Right. They are providing scholarship, but at this point, most of these, 90% of these cats from urban communities, the scholarship mean it needs to be a little bit more than scholarship. They need some type of financial resources to supplement their lifestyles. Let me let me piggyback off what Red said with the urban communities. So you got a lot of inner city kids, a lot of kids from poor families who have who are a part of this, right? So for instance, let's go Jalen Brunson Villanova. Uh, he's a, he's a senior now point guard. He could have came out probably about two years ago when they won a national championship. He's one of the top players, but he came for money though. But, right, exactly. His father played in the NBA. He came from money. But you can't tell me if your parents only making 70, 80,000 combined in the household raising four, five kids, that you got a chance. If somebody tell you you can make two, three, four, five million, you're not going to take that opportunity. So, those are, you know, that's, that's a big part of it. Like a cat like Grayson Allen at Duke, yeah, he come from money. His family not poor. So, yeah, he can afford to stay in school four years. But if my mom and them poor, and, and somebody tell me I could be a late first round pick and make a million dollars, I'm coming out to help my family. All right. So, Oklahoma went down. <laughs> went down quick. Quick. Trey Young. So we better talk about what Lefty called him, Jimmer 2.0. <laughs> <Jimmer 2. laughs> Which is Trey Young. Trey Young, I'm sorry, man, but you, you Jimmer 2.0 right now, man. Should this cat come out? Yeah. Why? I'll let y'all answer it. Well, True. Why do you think he need to come out? Go to past shows and hear what I You know what? I, I don't know. I don't know much about the kid, but um, he had a decent year. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about we all have bad games. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, so that don't mean you don't come out. That don't mean you go out. You don't come out and, and, and get that paper. You can't have a yeah. bad game but on the biggest stage, though. My man, he had seven bad games. I watched him <laughs> as the year progressed. Every year, he had he seven game losing the street. Oklahoma lost seven in a row, dog. He was horrible. Oscar Robinson called his brother, told him keep his head up, stay to the process, you know. But still, even even to they lost today, and he had a subpar game. He but at the off. same time, he a six foot dude getting triple team. He ain't gonna get get his yeah, off like that in that situation. If man. he can't get off in he this setting, how you think he gonna get off in the league when the lights are really bright and the pressure is even intense? Jim, I'm just saying. So, hold on. I'm gonna lean to my left so I can let my man get in because he been he been he been woofing about this kid. Okay. For the last three podcasts, man. I'm gonna, Lefty, come I'm, on. I'm gonna do this in 30 seconds. I ain't knocking the kid. I think his his, his basketball you skills. Oh, Jimmer 2.0. Hey, Jimmer had a great college career. He playing at China. Jimmer was a shooter. Right Jimmer was, was a shooter. Point. But 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 when I when I when I look at a lot of college kids and you can be good on a college level even with football, but how does it translate into the pro game? Right. I think he's undersized. He he's somewhat quick and fast, but he he can't compare to what he's gonna go up against in the NBA. He don't, play no he, he don't he don't have the size. He don't have the strength. He's not gonna be able to get his shot. Everything and it, it, it took it, and, and we don't, but we remember it took Steph a few years. Steph didn't come in the league being MVP Steph. But they said the same thing about Steph when he's in Davidson. 
Yeah, but okay, but everybody's not going to do what Steph did. Everybody's not going to come in and, and and improve their game to that point. So it's easy to compare him to Steph, but does he have the work ethic to do that? Does he have the people around him give him that? Steph hey. father played in the league. Hey, he been he been, been league. Man. He been league. He been he he did four years. I think he got the work ethic. Yeah, because he had a chance to leave. I you know play. what I'm saying? He, he, he can be the next Jimmy Buckets. I want to be, play devil's advocate for a second. And I don't think the comparison is fair to Steph because Steph always can shoot the ball. This kid is erratic shooting the ball. He had good games where he had 28, 30. That's far and in between. He had seven straight games where he couldn't even bat bucket. Not even a free throw. He but, and, and he, he shoots 50 times. Yeah, but the one thing Steph long. had, Steph put that ball in the basket. This young kid is really sporadic. And I just think that he's at a disadvantage with the media and the hype behind him, and he started believing the hype, and it affected his game going down the stretch. Yeah. I love the kid. I ain't hating, but I'm just saying that the pressure and the expectations affected the kid tremendously going down the stretch. Does this game translate to the NBA for you, Red? I don't see it. I just don't, I don't see, see it. it. Pressure bus pipes. Now with the point guards that's in the league, I just don't see it. Bigger, game. stronger point guards. And he cannot defend I anybody. I don't see him defending nobody. All right, all right, since we talking about pressure, I'm finna put you on the pressure cooker, man. We going to the shot clock round. Shot clock round, everybody is where my man on, on the panel gonna have a, a shot clock to say they point. Got it? This is how we going. We going quick, fast, and let's go. Right. Y'all ready for this? Mm -hmm. All right, check it out. First question: Tom Brady versus Drew Brees. We going at tree first, man. I'm giving you Tom Brady. So shot clock on, man. Let's go. Hey, Tom Brady is the number one quarterback in the league. He's been the number one quarterback in the league for a long time. You know, him and him and him and Drew go back and forth about how many how many yards they put up. But Tom Brady, back I mean, football IQ is off the charts. All right, all right, lucky lefty, it's on you, man. You got Drew Brees. Let's go. Uh, Drew Brees to be an a undersized quarterback. Uh, small hands, not a big guy. He's barely six feet. They say he's six one, six two. I think he's five nine. But uh, what he's been able to accomplish, the yards he's been able to put up, you know that. <laughs> Reds, we we, we, we shot it lefty. I'm gonna shout lefty for five seconds of my time. But <laughs> I'm gonna go with Drew Brees too. Drew Brees, the technician. I love Brady for the accomplishment with Belichick in the system. That speaks for itself. But Brees is an animal. You got a couple more seconds, though. You went shot. Well, I, I, you just went gave, shot. I just gave left a few of my seconds. Well, let me get through them seconds then. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going in, man. Listen, Tom Brady. Tom Brady right now is, to me, the GOAT of NFL quarterbacks. He's doing his thing, man. Year in, year out, he's doing his thing, man. And he's 40 years old. What? Only person that you could compare him to. Uh -huh. Uh, we showed a shot clock violation. All right, next Play question. With next question. <laughs> Kirk Cousins, his payday. The why or the why not? Tree, why not? Why not? Why not, Kirk Cousins? I, like I said before, Kirk put up decent numbers, and because of the way the quarterback game was situated in the NFL, he deserves the paper. Give him. You got the shot off. You got the shot off, babe. You got the shot off before the shot clock. All right. I'm going to give you the why, Reg. Why should he get that paper? I'm going to say why not. Because he, he he's long-term, in these three years, that team is going to suffer major losses. So I think it's a bad choice for the front office for the Minnesota Vikings. Case Kanan was a pretty good, steady quarterback to go with that defense. Lucky lefty. I'm giving you the why not on Kirk Cousins. Uh, he ain't did shit. He ain't won nothing. <laughs> Washington ain't won nothing. I don't see how you get 84 million guaranteed if you ain't won a damn playoff game. <laughs> Shot off. Damn. <laughs> All net. Swish. <laughs> <laughs> All right, check it out. I'm going to take the wide night, and I'm going to go. Check it out, man. He shouldn't have got that payday, man. What I would like to say, though, is Monique, you need to get his agent. <laughs> you got that payday too. His agent been getting him paid for about four years now. Monique Shot off. Monique will come with him like Bernard. <laughs> Bernard. <laughs> all right, man. Listen, everybody talks about the NBA, man. The MVP race and all that. Harden. Yay or nay? Oh, my God. Lefty. 
I'm gonna give you the yay. Go. Uh, yay. Sixty point triple double. Uh, best record in the league. I mean, what else? What else can be said, man? The guy is, is damn near unstoppable uh, as a scorer, but he's proved he's more than a scorer. And the fact that okay, shot clock violation. I, I, I missed the shot. He missed the shot. Hit the back of the rim. Plus about two seconds. <laughs> Ridge, I'm giving you the why he should get it. Why doesn't he get MVP? The last three years, he finished second in the running. It's his time. He's been balling out, head and shoulders. LeBron's always consistent. He's going to be there. But Hart's been head and shoulders above everybody. Swish. Tree, I'm giving you the why. Why should he get MVP? Man, I don't think he should, cause they're not gonna be Golden State. No. He's gonna fold. I don't think he gonna he gonna he's not gonna be able to pull it off. So why give it to him? Why MVPs for regular season? Hey, we know what he's gonna do in post. Hey, can I say this? This shot clock remind me of the Boston Celtics in the Garden in the eighties when they should turn the damn heat up. No doubt, bullshit. I call it bullshit. bullshit. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Hey, all right, so check it out. Hard. Why not? He shouldn't get it because he's going to choke in the playoffs like he usually do. You can't have bad games on the biggest stage. Right. You know what I'm saying? He gotta he, he gotta prove. He gotta show and prove. Now if he's showing proof, give him the MVP. Swish. Man, the awards are about regular season numbers, not playoff numbers. You know what I'm saying. Come on, come on. Now I'm gonna hit y'all with a curveball, man. Diddy and his group. What group? His, his financial group, man, they are trying to buy the Panthers. Is it good or is it bad? I know you want to get in on this, so I'm going to hold you. I'm going to hold you to last. Right, okay. Treat. Why would it be good for Diddy and his, his team to make a purchase in the NFL? Go. Hey, The Rock proved that um, black people can do something in the NBA. So I think it's time for black people to do something in the NFL. Hey, give us a chance. We're going to make that paper. We gonna make a team better. We gonna bring better players to the team for a cheaper price. Damn, I can not do that. Rich, what's up? I'm gonna say this: They starting to bid at two billion. If Puff and anybody associated with him come up with two billion dollars, I'm gonna offer it one love. That was quick, man. That was man. a real general, man. I'm just saying, yeah, bro. Took the general way two, out. Two billion is a lot of money, out, man. Two billion is a lot of money. Two billion. And the man at the table, just in the conversation, it's worth it's worth some attention. All right. Shot clock is on you, Lefty. What you got? How much time we got? All right. <laughs> no, real quick. Uh, no, I'm going to say it's a good thing. It's time for a uh, black owner in the NFL. Mm -hmm. uh, NFL is predominantly black. Uh, black players, uh, more black coaches are coming up. It's time for a black owner. That's pretty much it. All right. We early in the game of the NCAA March Madness. We're going to take it back there because it's the hottest thing right now. Tree, who you got coming out? What's your final four? Uh, man, that's a rough one. That's a tough one. Uh, man, give me. There ain't no shot clock on, man. <sighs> give me. Yeah, because that shot clock bogus. Hey, man. The pressure. The pressure. <laughs> hey, hey. The I'm, pressure going, I'm going with Loyola. <laughs> Being the final four, three, fuck three, everybody, three, 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 fuck three, everybody. Three, 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 no doubt. Yeah, the shoulders on point, monkey shoulders on point. Um, Loyola in the final four. What you got, Reg? Villanova, Carolina. Do uh, I'm sorry, Michigan State, <laughs> Arizona. <laughs> all right. Them all good picks, man. So you, what you saying is Arizona gonna run the table? No, I'm saying Michigan State don't run the table. What I'm saying is they got to run the table to get the Final Four, man. They got the toughest bracket. Yeah, but Arizona tough. They got the big man in the middle. Anytime Lucky you don't get looking at his sheet. He getting ready for this, Yeah, man. you got the bigs, man. Anytime yeah. you got the bigs that control the glass. Ar got Arizona got a little pressure on them. Their coach going to get fired right after that. Right, 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 right in the middle? So it's no, right after. Right after that last it's shot. It's more incentive to play big then. Lucky, what you got? The hell we getting fired. He going to. FBI Murder Taps. The fans don't play. Uh, I'm going to go my final four in my bracket. I got uh, Virginia uh, coming out the South. 
I'm gonna go Carolina come out the West going to Final Four. I'm gonna go Villanova in the East, and I'm gonna go Duke in the Midwest. Ooh, you got Duke beat my Spartans. Oh, have mercy. You got, you got Duke. Race now they're gonna have a tournament. Check it out. I I, I like Virginia. <laughs> they play defense. <coughs> you gonna call on my state? Man, I'm sorry. Virginia, Carolina. Uh, I'm gonna go with Michigan State because I think they're gonna they're gonna get Duke. And that last bracket is uh, ooh, we, uh it's kind of rough on that last bracket. Uh, uh, shit, I don't know. I don't know. We got the final three. We got the final three. Man. <laughs> <laughs> the last bracket. Right, 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 right. Pull out my cheat sheet. Pull out some cheat sheet. And when you wrong, I want to be wrong. Right, you know. Uh, you ain't picking nobody in the East. <laughs> <laughs> Villanova, that that bracket. Yeah, I'll go with Nova. I'm gonna go with Nova, man. But Nova, that's a tough, that's a tough battle for them, man. Tough battle coming out of the East. Purdue was number good two. Team, veteran team, 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 though. Hey, Purdue team. number two in that bracket. Don't they got, they they got, got juniors and seniors. Seniors. juniors and seniors mean something in the NCAA they, they are a well coached team, man. They don't have no stars and none of that, man. Oh, so Purdue? yeah, so they they can make it make some trouble for them. Man. Okay. And they got a seven three center, so that's <laughs> always big. Right. Shout Check it out, man. Year. Big ups to all the cigar shops, man. We at the Roman Castle kicking it, man. And this is how we do it. If you want to come kick it with us, man, that's all you got to do is inbox us. Any one of us that's on, on the show, man, you can come hang out with us, man. We out. Drinks up, smokes up. That's how we get down. Yep. And with being bracket wrong, I want y'all to tell us that. How wrong he was. R.I.P. B. Craig Mack. Definitely, definitely. Rest R. up. R.I.P. R.I.P. Craig Mack. Is this best. Say to be your five bad boy rap. The no best. At the dawn, now I'm yawning. Wipe the cold out my eye. See who's this page of me. And wow. Y'all just want to think of that. 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 Y'all just want to think